Nine years of trying and nine years of failing. It's not been an easy ride for Manchester United as they try to get close to emulating their glory years under Sir Alex Ferguson. Five managers have come and gone since the Scotsman retired in 2013. But finally, under manager number six, Eric Ten Hag, things are already looking to be a little brighter for the Red Devils. So what's changed? Well, that's what we're going to find out today on Football Reality. There was certainly a lot of media interest and anticipation around Eric Ten Hag when he was appointed as Manchester United manager in May, ready to take over from Ralph Rangnick in the summer. The Dutchman had an impressive CV, building the most talented Ajax side in a generation and taking them to the brink of a Champions League final in 2019. He also won three Eredivisie titles and two Dutch Cups with the Giants from Amsterdam. Previously, he'd spent two years in charge of Bayern Munich's second team, working closely with then first-team boss Pep Guardiola. It was like winning the lottery, said Ten Hag about the chance to work with Pep, who he learned a great deal from. In fact, he was nicknamed Mini Pep while at Bayern for the way he studied and tried to emulate Guardiola's approach to training, work ethic and tactics. Pep returned the compliments when asked if Ten Hag could succeed him at City before he joined United, of course. He said, for the way he approaches the game, definitely, definitely. A great time all around for the Mutual Appreciation Society. So United got themselves a highly rated, successful manager. But so what? They did the same when they appointed Louis van Gaal, who in fact won one more Eredivisie title than Ten Hag, the Bundesliga with the Bayern first team, La Liga with Barcelona and the Champions League with Ajax but he ended up getting sacked on the bus home from Wembley after winning the FA Cup. Even Jose Mourinho, winner of two Champions Leagues and titles in England, Portugal, Spain and Italy, could only manage an EFL Cup and Europa League in two and a half years at Old Trafford and was removed mid-season. If it's not the success, then is it the hype? Well, there was tons of anticipation for David Moyes the first man to take the reins after Fergie's departure and recommended by Sir Alex himself thanks to his distinguished career at Everton. But he didn't even complete a full season at United, came 7th in 2014, a year after winning what is still their most recent Premier League title. Former player and cult hero Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enjoyed a brilliant honeymoon period when taking over from Mourinho on an interim basis. But the love-in soon lost its magic when he signed permanently finally losing his job in autumn 2021, with many feeling he should have been let go of long before. But that was no problem, because in came Ralph Ranić, former RB Leipzig manager and creator of Gagan Pressing. Finally, a tactical master to take over, turn things around and then oversee the appointment of a successor. Didn't work out. United finished the season disastrously, despite having Cristiano Ronaldo to call upon. In fact, it was so bad, Ranić never even took up the consultancy position he was supposed to last summer. So, if it's not his experience or the hype, what is it that's different? Is it all about the players instead? United have certainly recruited well this summer. One of Ten Hag's former Ajax stars, Lissandro Martinez, has proved countless doubters wrong since his questionable start to the season, becoming one of the first names on the team sheet. Casemiro has arrived from Real Madrid to shore up the midfield, while tricky winger Anthony has looked very bright since his arrival, also from Ajax. That's it then. United have spent their way out of trouble and it's not all down to the gaffer. Well, if it was as simple as that, then why did none of the previous managers get much of a tune, at least on a weekly basis, from the likes of Romelu Lukaku, Paul Pogba, Alexis Sanchez and even Cristiano? they all commanded huge transfer fees and more wages. They've all done great things in their careers and come to Old Trafford with great reputations, but the trophies didn't follow. Talking of Ronaldo, we've already seen Ten Hag's disciplinary measures in action and how they apply to every player, even multiple Ballon d'Or winners. We mentioned the frosty star Eric and CR7 had in our video about Ronaldo's top flight career coming to an end. Check it out and watch it after this video ends. Since then, Ronaldo stormed off early after not being brought on against Tottenham. Ten Hag's response? Leave him out of the squad for the next game. This prompted praise from United legend turned pundit Gary Neville, as he believed Ten Hag dealing with big personalities 
not just Ronaldo but also the under-fire Harry Maguire, was a sure sign that the dark days at Old Trafford are a thing of the past. Disciplinary measures introduced to the United dressing room are also having a positive impact on the youngsters too. After Alejandro Garnacho was late to two team meetings on their preseason tour this summer, the manager refused to give him any game time in either Thailand or Australia. Since then, Garnacho has sorted out his tardiness and apparently is now one of the first arrivals to training every morning. This has led to him being rewarded with minutes in the Europa League and Premier League in recent weeks, impressing fans and pundits alike and scoring his first goal against Real Sociedad. The 18-year-old was even named in Argentina's provisional squad for the 2022 World Cup. He didn't make the final cut, but surely a first cap for the Albiceleste is on the horizon. It's amazing what a little bit of discipline can do, especially after such attitudes were lacking under previous bosses such as Ranić and Solskjaer. Tactically, Ten Hag wants his team to be proactive, with fast attacking football as teammates constantly give each other options, while in defence, they press. The attack seems similar to the style so familiar in Sir Alex Ferguson's day, while pressing is something Ralph Ranić wanted to impose but it largely failed. But Ten Hag is getting his philosophy across, partly because he uses the players that are best suited to it and sticks to his guns. For example, he brought Marcus Rashford back in from the cold and doesn't make Ronaldo the focus of tactics that don't suit him best. But are we going all in too early on Ten Hag? He's only been in the job for a few months after all, so are we being too quick to label him a success? Perhaps, but longevity isn't always needed to leave a club as a managerial hero. Take Chelsea, winners of two Champions League titles since United's last success in the same competition. The two managers who lifted old biggies, Roberto Di Matteo in 2012 and Thomas Tuchel in 2021, had both taken over partway through those respective seasons, won the biggest prize of all, then didn't exactly stick around long. Mikel Arteta began his stint as Arsenal manager brightly, winning the FA Cup in 2020 six months into his reign. He is now doing wonders with a young squad after two full seasons, which were both more challenging, but it's still that early silver where he has to show for all his work. So, it seems there is no reason why Eric Ten Hag needs a long time at Old Trafford to be considered a great. If this current form continues and he wins a trophy or two before moving on, that certainly doesn't seem like a bad thing. Just because Sir Alex stuck around for 27 years doesn't mean everyone has to. So, that's it for today's video. What do you think? Is Eric Ten Hag the successor to Sir Alex Ferguson that Man United have been crying out for all these years? Or is this just an extended period of new manager bounce? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to Football Reality today, and join us again very soon for our next video.